so welcome everybody um there is an amazing amount of people thank you so much for coming um but as you were joining uh we were talking about the fact that in um in other kind of rendezvous events uh, um part, part, of the, uh, part of the africa community they they quite often start and end with music and it really adds to the to the atmosphere and uh, we we realize that we don't have music currently so um so maybe that's a suggestion for future improvements that we'll capture before the end of the day. Um, so welcome. Um, my name is Matt Barnaby. I'm part of uh, the Impact Basis slash REN21 team. And I'm going to help to uh, moderate, facilitate the conversations that we have today um, that, are, that, that, that are focusing on kind of, you know, the solution to energy security and rising prices. Um, a slightly different format to some of our global rendezvous sessions in as much as the conversation is mainly going to be in this space instead of going into smaller breakout rooms because it's such a pertinent conversation that we wanted to really hear the, uh, um, from voices in the room. So on that note, to help us have a really good event, if it is possible, could you please Flick onto mute so um, so it limits some of the background noise. Um, and if you're unable to, Max will kind of be able to pick up where sound is coming from and and and, and click you on mute. So apologies if that's a bit abrupt, but it just helps to uh, uh, keep the keep the noise in the room okay. The other thing as well is is we always invite you to turn your cameras on if you would like to, and of course of course if you can. Uh, um, it's just so that we can always see uh, who's in the room as if we were really there uh, uh, in, in person. So the last thing to mention, there's two things to mention before I hand over, is that if you can only see me talking at the moment, that's a, not a great experience for anybody. Up in the right hand corner of your screen, you can toggle, you can see where it says view. And if you click on that, you get the option to go from speaker view to gallery view. So we invite you to have gallery view on at times like this. So you can see all the lovely faces of people that are now waving at you. Watch. See, works every time. Um, and the last thing to mention is, is we do want this to be interactive. We've got some great speakers, some great panelists, but as always, we invite you to make the use of the chat function so that if you have any reflections or questions as we go throughout, they're captured and they're not lost. So the chat function is there for us to create our kind of shared shared repository of thoughts. So um, so please do make use of that. On that note, that's it from me for now. I'm going to hand over to Rana to um, give us some context and kick us off. So Rana, over to you. Thank you very much, Matt. Um, hello, everybody from Paris. Uh, very excited uh, to welcome you to another global rendezvous. Um, why global rendezvous? Because we also have some regional rendezvous and we see that during the last couple of uh, months where we worked uh, specifically looked into rendezvous in Africa that many of those topics are actually interconnected. So global and local is connected and especially in the current uh, situation, um, even more connected um, because geopolitics, the economic situation, the energy crisis, energy cost has massive impacts everywhere. Um, so I think it is, these are topics that, uh, that accompany us, all of us, I guess, as energy players, as renewable energy players um, today. And uh, we certainly see lots of tensions, opportunities, challenges, um, the short-term responses of governments uh, to basically ensure energy security, potentially undermining um, the investments in more sustainable, resilient, climate-friendly um, renewable energy infrastructure. And um, I guess we're here to, um, as usual in the rendezvous, um, hear different perspectives um share different perspectives also and identify the the tension that are there 
And uh, I guess from Renton One side, we're really curious to have the discussions with you on what do we as renewable energy community all together need to do to push basically renewables much more prominently on the agenda and at the heart of political, economic and geopolitical discussions. So um, I'm very much looking forward uh, to the discussions. As usual, we have like this lightning talk and uh, then the possibility for all of you to jump into this and um, yeah. Welcome Good and uh, sorry. Okay, I think this was not. Um, <laughs> and, and you have probably seen the. Sorry, I thought there was uh, somebody speaking, and uh, you've probably seen like uh, the briefing. I guess like, uh, please don't hesitate to also bring up basically um, aspects, thoughts, questions, difficult questions we need to address here. I mean, we always uh, see that. As community, as renewable players, we obviously have blind spots, I guess, uh, because we're very much convinced of the fact that renewable energy is the answer to many things. But uh, the reality outside is sometimes a bit different. And I think it's really important that we crack this here. Thanks a lot. Brilliant. Thanks, Rana. And so on that note, um, we're going to get straight into it. So this is the rough flow of the session uh, today in the time that we've got together. First of all, we're going to have uh, a lightning talk, so a, 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 a short presentation to, 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 to really get us kind of thinking and talking. Once that presentation is over, there's going to be a panel discussion of three of our, of our colleagues on the call here to, to dig into some of these questions that are starting to, rate, uh, that are starting to be discussed with us today. Um, from there, though, what we'll be doing is, 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 is taking an empty seat type approach whereby the panelists talking who have been talking previously will stay sort of spotlighted, but people are able to either do two things, submit questions into the chat that can be asked, and I'll do my best to kind of ask them effectively, efficiently and effectively for you, or even better, if you would like to join in the conversation, uh, um, you can use uh, the, the, the emoji function at the bottom of the screen to raise a hand. And at the right time, Max, my colleague, will spotlight you, which indicates that you're now on the stage and you can join in the conversation. So on that note, let's get straight into it. So I'm going to introduce uh, uh, Katrina Urova Hasbani. Uh, to the stage. Uh, Max uh, will we'll now spotlight you, Katrina. Uh, um, Katrina is a partner and global director of strategy and advisory of AESG. Now, Katrina, I have got a brief description of, uh, um, of, of, of you. Um, I just don't think I can do a good enough, uh, um, I don't think I can do it as well as you do. So would you mind introducing yourself to the, to the audience and then giving your lightning talk? Excellent. Um, you are right. I, I am currently a partner and director strategy for a specialized technical consultancy that works with governments and private sector companies in Middle East, Singapore and UK uh, to plan and implement ESG sustainability and net zero requirements. And of course, um, implementing uh, renewable energy mandates and increasing share of renewable energy in our client's portfolio is one of the um, uh, major of the objectives of the, of the work that I'm delivering. However, I have uh, quite some history with renewable energy. Over the past 20 years, I've uh, worked in, in Europe, uh, Middle East and Asia, including on few assignments with uh, REN21 uh, in the region that is very much in the spotlight today in uh, uh, Eastern Europe, uh, Central Asia, Caucasus and, and Russia. So uh, the recent developments are close to my heart. I'm originally from Slovakia, even though uh, um, you know, Middle East has become my home and currently I'm based in Dubai. So I will be using this opportunity and I have few some slides that are or should be in the background, thank you very much, uh, to just present some ideas uh, of uh, how the current situation relates to renewables and especially the current context of uh, energy security and rising uh, prices. So we can go to the first slide. 
And I'll, I'll start uh, very much from a bigger picture. Um, I, uh, I studied political sciences in Paris in the home of REN21. <laughs> and uh, it stayed with me, right? Like I always like to look at things from the bigger picture. And uh, what we are um, up to today as a, as a global society is really uh, immense changes. It's very rare. Uh, I think in, in, in history that, that we have an opportunity and we know of it, that we are witnessing very significant changes to the way our world is basically organized because we are currently encountering changes at three levels. Our international political order is changing. Um, you know, we, we have been witnessing several decades of globalization that has been put into question, but still uh, it has been one of the main uh, currents in the international political order. We are currently witnessing creation of a new order that might be bipolar, tri tripolar, bipolar with a buffer in the middle. Let's see how it goes. But we should just know that our international political system is changing. Um, at the same time, our monetary system is changing uh, the, the hegemony of uh, uh, US dollar uh, might be um, challenged is being challenged um, you know an energy sector has a role to play uh, US dollar has been traditionally the main currency for for trading uh, especially the older traditional fossil fuels and uh, you know, just over the past few months, we've heard that um, um, you know Saudi Arabia might trade in in Chinese currency, in UN. Um, you know other currencies might emerge uh, that could uh, uh, threaten the role that the US dollar has been playing. Now the third change, which is closest to the hearts of the people that are here on this call, of course, is changing to the renewable energy market and. Uh, what we are seeing are so many changes at so many levels, right? I mean, for the past uh, 15 years, we have been witnessing uh, an energy transition that has been accelerating with uh, increased pressure on decarbonization and climate action over the past um, few years, maybe three to five. Uh, however, adding to that is the current turmoil where uh, the oil and gas markets are being divided uh, into essentially uh, countries uh, that are willing to procure uh, Russian supplies and those that are not. Um, and as a result of this, um, you know, what I see are really three sort of pressure points that are being created and uh, uh, renewables sit uh, in the middle of these three pressure points. The first one is really the pressure on, on energy security. Energy security has been in the forefront uh, for a while, but today really in terms of physical security of supplies, um, you know, countries are, countries, regions, cities uh, are looking again at the agenda, how they can procure reliable sources of energy. The second um, trend uh, has, is, is, has started with the, with the COVID-19 pandemic is a trend of localization. Uh, you know, our supply chains have been, uh, supply chains have changed over the past three years with the COVID pandemic. And uh, with the current um, military conflict ongoing, even more so companies and including those uh, uh, present in energy and those supplying electricity and uh, energy services are looking at localizing uh, their supply chain closer to the customer. And finally, uh, the, the trend of carbon reduction is here to stay, um, definitely. I mean, uh, we are witnessing an increased pressure with the reports of IPCC and just the inevitable fact that, you know, we are not going to meet the target of uh, capping the, the temperature reduction at 1.5 degrees. So renewables um, can co contribute to achieving the, the, the objectives of energy security, localization and, and carbon reduction at the same time. And, and that's where the power of renewable energy is. Um, now, I want to go with the next slide to the region where I'm currently based, Dubai. Uh, and. Uh, you know, it's it's quite interesting how Middle East currently sits really in the middle of this, literally, right? Uh, because in many ways, Middle East is keeping for now a bit of neutral position between uh, the the two blocks that are emerging, and uh, it has an important role to play. Um, 
in renewables, but also in, um, of course, the traditional um, energy. From the perspective of fossil fuels, most of the countries in the Middle East are important either as producers um, uh, or as uh, transit countries for, for uh, oil and gas. Um, I mean, I won't go into all of the details, but, um, you know, with, with the exception of Morocco, Tunisia, uh, and uh, um, I think really that's it. Uh, all of the other countries have some form of oil and gas resources. And of course, uh, United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia are the countries that everyone is looking to right now um, for uh, some potential replacement of the Russian supplies of oil and gas. But at the same time, this region with its uh, geo geological, geographical uh, um, and um, uh, irradiation conditions is an excellent um, uh, source of renewable energy, whether it's solar or wind. And uh, not only that, um, with uh, the consideration to increase uh, hydrogen uh, demand uh, in Europe by four times uh, as a consequence of the conflict between Russia and Ukraine. Uh, the Middle East is also now looked upon as, a, as a, one of the core suppliers of hydrogen uh, produced, of course, again, with renewable energy. So, so that's the situation really, really today. And, uh, you know, my, my team has done here an interesting work. Uh, the pipelines that you see on the slide are actually indicating where what could be the routes for future um, hydrogen pipelines uh, to, to supply hydrogen from this region to Europe should the should this project take place which I think now it's become increasingly certain that it will and uh, finally what I want to finish on uh, with a uh, few remarks but also a few questions um, you know what we are seeing today is that uh, the crisis is localized also in a way that it creates different type of pressure in different regions. And uh, being based in, in Dubai, I'm acutely aware of the differences in terms of the energy security and uh, energy prices consideration. In Europe, um, you know, definitely the immediate pressure is on is put on replacement of uh, Russian oil and gas supplies. Um, also via some, um, you know, short term additions of renewable energy but mainly it's about swapping uh, Russian oil and gas by non-Russian uh, oil and gas. Uh, over a longer term, um, this crisis um, is uh, definitely, you know, pushing renewable energy more at the forefront. When it comes to energy prices, um, uh, I, I think that the dynamic is, is, is playing in favor of renewables uh, in Europe uh, with, um, you know, clear business case today for introduction of especially some of the lower cost technologies. Uh, however, some obstacles remain, you know, whether it's uh, uh, some of the um, uh, stress or some of the difficult decisions that have to be made about uh, renewables for power generation, heating and cooling, trade-offs with uh, production of hydrogen and so on. Now, in Middle East, the situation is completely different and um, I am uh, a, a bit sitting in between to on in terms of a conclusion whether it's good or uh, bad for for the industry of renewables and and net zero because um you know, while just until December, uh, there have been a very clear uh, shift to um, mm, mm, uh, stronger uh, acceleration of uh, renewable energy development, of development of alternative energy sources. Uh, today, um, you know, it has become clear that there is a renewed demand for oil and gas coming from this region. So any future investment into renewables today have to compete with additional re re investments that are required uh, to redevelop uh, oil and gas resources. And uh, also um, what is playing uh, against us uh, in, in, in this region is uh, uh, the situation of uh, capped energy prices. Um, you know, it has some positive 
positive uh, economic consequences, of course, but whereas in Europe, we are expecting a wave of innovation in, uh, in this region with the current, uh, and in this region, I'm specifically actually referring to the GCC, uh, UAE and Saudi Arabia in particular, because some of the other countries in the Middle East, especially in, in North Africa, have uh, market prices for energy, but in UAE and Saudi Arabia in particular, um, you know, we are uh, uh, protected from uh, from the increasing market price or prices of energy, which has consequences for innovation. And uh, the last point which I want to mention is um, is really hydrogen. Uh, uh, this is really one of the key 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 topics and centers of interest uh, in 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 GCC in Saudi Arabia in UAE in relation to uh, what could be the role and the, the the relationship between this region and Europe in the in the future uh, when we uh, um, you know talk about the renewable energy development developments it's it's very often renewable energy developments for the purpose of hydrogen production um, you know in in UAE we are talking about 30 gigawatts of of electric uh, uh, power generation to be installed for hydrogen production only in neighboring Oman 25 gigawatts and so on Saudi they have similar targets so you know altogether we can have uh, close to or more than 100 gigawatts of solar power generation for hydrogen production to be in place by 2030. So this is sort of the landscape and, and the question really is uh the question really is what, what are the next steps, uh, you know, uh, wh where we will go from here over the coming 12 months and uh, two to three years from now. But I, I let the other speakers to make their contribution and we can uh, talk a little bit more about um, uh, where, where we see the market heading. Thank you very much. Thanks, Katrina, and thanks for that, for that. It's really sort of informative and in-depth uh, uh, presentation. I, 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 I'm always kind of um, open and honest when I'm involved in a rendezvous session around the fact that my background isn't the world of renewable energies, but and I always learn so much just by being involved in these uh, conversations and 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 and. And interpreting my understanding from a kind of, you know, from a perspective of kind of I'm outside of this industry, really. Uh, and what you said there resonates a lot in terms of what I'm reading and what I'm seeing and, and, and so on around me in the, in the current situation. Um, I was scribbling notes down frantically as you were talking, trying to think about what is a question, what is an intelligent question that will justify uh, uh, my, 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 my response to what I just heard. However, um, I can't do as good as a couple of the questions that landed in the chat. So one of the reflections that I just wanted to ask you specifically before we invite our colleagues to join is, is kind of uh, uh, Rana uh, asked the question in there around kind of what about increasing interest rates and the impact of renewable energy costs, especially in some developing countries. Is there any kind of thought that you might have in response to that question that was posed? Is it for me? Yes. Yeah, no, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, well, you know, the, the what I haven't developed is, 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 um, is, is what what is the overall economic situation um, um, globally and uh, uh, you know I guess this is something that any region in the world has in common today uh, with with inflation and increased costs which are also translating into it into increased cost of capital so mm -hmm. um, yes indeed you know the 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 the, the financing costs uh, are becoming higher for renewable energy uh, however uh, you know. It's the same for any industry. It's not like renewable energy is penalized while the other industries are not, right? So um, it, it's some sort of not, not such a great, but it's still a level level playing field that is out there. Um, and it's the same for, um, you know, other sources of energy. So I, you know, while the situation for, a, for, for renewable in industry from that perspective is harder than it was before, um, I don't see that it would, um, you know, 
have uh, that the industry would be exposed to some uh, penalties that the other industries are are not. But what where I see the the pressure coming is is really this competition between sources, right? Uh, until now, um, there was a you know, until really maybe 18 months ago, there was a real priority for development of renewable energy. Uh, in Europe, already we have seen some signs uh, that hydrogen, um, uh, renewables for hydrogen were competing uh, with uh, renewables for power generation, and uh, a lot of government interest was put on hydrogen. And now, in mm. addition to that, we have the situation with oil and gas, where governments are prioritizing, again, the, the development of, of uh, oil and gas and it's the case here in middle east it's the case in the us it's the case in europe mm -hmm. so the question for me is is not so much about um you know the pressure that the industry is exposed to that are common for all the industries which the increase in interest rates is but it's more about you know what are the new pressures and what are the new things that renewables have to compete with and i think it's really the uh inter resources competition and uh mm -hmm. My my biggest question is really, you know, what what will the governments prioritize, right, in in mm. terms of uh, power generation, fuels, and so on. Sure, sure. Thank you, thank you for that. Thank you again for your presentation. Mm.